Hello, this is Nicholas. I take interest in studying different artists. Now, I wanted to focus on a particular costume designer by the name of Nyla Dixon. Now, I know she did not design every outfit. I wanted to focus because this is interesting. Now, some of you may remember she wore this early on, and one of the questions that fans often ask is, why didn't she wear this in the actual series of the show? And Lucy Lawless uh, made a statement that it was wickedly difficult difficult to wear and it was somewhat uncomfortable. You can see some of the sharp edges of the actual wires that go around the corset. The actual costume changed over time. For example, if you look here, you see this purple scarf inside, but I believe this was actually placed in there to prevent the metal from rubbing against her skin, which <laughs> was an issue. Okay, before I forget, one question is, how did they manage to get the wire itself embedded into the leather? There was a second skin that the wire would be embedded into using some sort of thread to hold it into place and molded it on there to make it look like it was embedded which tells me that maybe what we think was leather was not leather to begin with. It's questionable. Furthermore, the skirt itself with the golden tags at the bottom, that was removable. Later in the episode, and you'll notice, she does not wear the purple scarf or fabric that I mentioned earlier, and the costume was constructed a little bit more better to prevent metal from rubbing against her skin. You'll see the shoulder guards. They were constructed to be slightly smaller, and the chain mail, the chain that came between her chest, came into the episode as well. But it was slightly difficult to manage with all that embedded and be able to perform. The actual design stands for female empowerment. Murray artist. It all means something. And it's to do with why he know which is women, women empowerment. That's where a lot of these designs come from. They did a lot of research and pulled from different historic times and implemented. What happened to it? This is the costume and it was actually auctioned. But this is parts of it. And here's another snapshot. And it's just interesting. It's weird to see it at this state. I wanted to focus on the actual series where Xena Warrior Princess, played by Lucy Lawless, if you look at her costume, it went through a lot of changes, and I want to compare from the first season to later on in the series. Put a lot of effort into the construction of this costume, the design, what they would call the breastplate. If you look later on in the series, it is actually, they're using a different material to create it, or a different structure overall and it lifts and separates. Uh, we've been through dozens of them. The stunt girls wear ones made out of foam and that are painted bronze, and, and I wear this one, which is <laughs> not so good for landing on. But. In the beginning of the series to where they wanted her to appear busty, as you can see here. And just a note on this, in the first season, she actually wore a two-piece, and later on it became a one-piece, and then at the end of the series, it became a two-piece. And the reason for that was, is because during fight scenes, in the one piece, her costume would bunch up. So they went back to the two-piece because it was ideal for fight scenes. The bodice was all in one piece, and they've remade that to make it into two, so it didn't wrinkle up so much with all the, you know, hip kicks. Furthermore, they actually used a, a spray-on tan to make her appear tanner. As for the infamous Xena tan. What am I wearing these days? You are a six. I was a six, my lord. I'm down two shades. Yes, we've um, paled me up because I just couldn't stand having that filthy brown stuff on my sheets every night. Her actual costume, as I stated previously, was constructed. She was wearing a two-piece. And you can see, like, the little symbols on the dress parts. And her sword was actually on her hip. And just to comment further on the sword, it had a more of an armory type of look to it. And eventually, it went to a dark shade of black. And it was a longer sword. And then the sword itself was made shorter. It was placed on the middle portion of her back and then placed higher on her back and she wore different belts to adjust for that as well and the reason why the sword went on her back is because she had to do different movements and acrobats and having the sword on the hip made it more difficult 
to accomplish that. Now, just to move higher up, shoulder guards changed. In the first season, the shoulder guards were really well designed, and they would always do over the uh, side shoulder cam reviews. Take a look at from the first season and then later on you can instantly tell a difference it would always come apart and then they would use like wires to put the shoulder guards on and later in the series it just wasn't really a priority to make it look as appealing as it once was now some artists or fans may be aware of her chakram in the very beginning her chakram did not have the actual diamonds on it that came in the beginning of the series continued her chakram became the yin yang and yes there was a fake version of the chakram as well now this is interesting when Zena was at her peak a nude photograph came out and everybody was going crazy they were saying how could she do this and all that but at that time photoshop or photo editing was not really known and here's the actual picture sorry i had to cut all the good stuff out but here's the original picture the pearson took from and just cut her head off pretty tricky huh now the actual creators of xena have a history of cutting her head off her body and putting it on different well it's kind of confusing so let me just show you the picture this is when the xena character first came out now this is the real image this is lucy lawless's body now what they did in order to promote the first season dvd they took a face shot of her that is more recent cut it off her body and put it on an old version of her body so take a look at this let me not forget about one stunt woman who really doesn't get a much credit her name is Geraldine Jacobson. I believe she was Zena's first stunt woman. And then Zobel became a later stunt woman. In addition, I would like to give credit to the fans of the show for collecting all these photos and the actual creators who created commentaries. And much credit to me for noticing a lot of these things that most people wouldn't care or be interested in noticing in the first place. Now, if you could notice all this, you are an artist <laughs> or a person with a lot of time on your hands, one or the other. Okay, thank you for watching.